Aquarium and water garden enthusiasts alike enjoy the creativity and beauty of aquatic ecosystems. Ontario hobbyists have the benefit of being able to buy a wide range of exotic species imported from around the world. Unfortunately, if given the chance, some of these exotic species can invade our natural habitats here at home. An exotic species is defined as a plant, animal or microorganism, bacteria and viruses, introduced by human activity outside of their natural range. Not all exotic species are invasive. Species become invasive when their introduction or spread threatens the environment, the economy, society or even human health. Invasive species are the second greatest threat to biodiversity, next to habitat destruction. There are a number of ways in which exotic species could be introduced into new environments. These pathways may be accidental or intentional and could include species from the aquarium and ornamental pond industry, the bait fish industry, the live food fish industry, and ballast water from shipping vessels. Until recently, the primary pathway for the introduction of non-native aquatic species into the Great Lakes has been the release of ballast water from ships accounting for over 75% of total introductions since 1970. However, since 2006, mandatory ballast water regulations have significantly reduced the risk of introductions via this pathway. Transport Canada's ballast water control and management regulations are now considered to be among the most stringent in the world. However, other pathways such as aquariums, water gardens and ponds receive far less attention as the consumer-based trade can also be a pathway for the introduction of aquatic invasive species in Canada. In fact, at least 12 species of exotic plants and animals have been introduced into the Great Lakes Basin via this route. For example, water soldier, fanwort and goldfish are now well established in Ontario and are having negative impacts on the lakes and rivers they've been introduced to. These organisms could be released through a number of activities, including the dumping of unwanted pets, mosquito and other insect control in stormwater management ponds, and a desire to naturalize these ponds, as well as ritualistic release during ceremonial practices. The likelihood of the release of organisms from ornamental ponds into the Great Lakes Basin is even greater due to our cold winters. Freezing temperatures can threaten pond fish, snails and plants, and people are often more likely to release their pond species into the wild than to house them indoors for the winter. Dumping or flushing unwanted aquarium pets and plants may transfer diseases that are not removed during water treatment processes or, depending on the sewer system, whatever you flush can be dumped directly into natural waterways. Releasing non-native organisms into the wild is also illegal. Invading species threaten Ontario's biodiversity, ecosystem function, resource availability and human health and have been recognized as a leading cause of native species becoming rare, threatened or endangered. Ontario is home to many different species of animals, plants, insects, smaller organisms. Many of these organisms are threatened by invasive species that come in from outside the country. Three primary impacts have been identified. The first is causing a change to fish community composition or the composition of other aquatic organisms that inhabit that space. There's also been negative changes associated with the ecological integrity of lakes, streams and rivers, and ponds. And that's typically because these species, once they become established, again, dominate the environment and take over space that would normally be occupied by native species. In some cases, the introduction of these aquatic invasive species have also altered the quality of water for a lake or a stream, such as zebra mussel introduction into the Great Lakes has changed the composition of water quality as well as changed the way that small fishes can feed within the water column of a warm water lake. Once they've become established, it can be extremely difficult and costly to eradicate introduced species. The control of invasive species is very costly. A recent study 
conducted at a national level for Canada estimated that it would cost somewhere between 13 and 35 billion dollars a year to control and prevent further spread of invasive species in Canada. In Ontario, the Invading Species Awareness Program was established in 1992 as a joint partnership between the Ministry of Natural Resources and the Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters. In response to the growing threats associated with fish and wildlife habitat from exotic invading species such as purple loosestrife, the sea lamprey, and zebra mussels. The primary mandate of the program is the protection and enhancement of Ontario's natural resources and address the threats from exotic invading species is of critical concern. Invading Species Awareness Program aims to raise public awareness of invading species through public participation, demonstrations, and education campaigns and encourages the public to prevent their spread through a number of control, monitoring, and prevention programs. Public education initiatives are instrumental in preventing introductions via the aquarium and water garden pathways. And studies show that people are increasingly receptive to messages about the environmental threats of invasive species. In a survey of consumers from the US, Canada, New Zealand, Ireland and Norway, 98% of respondents indicated that they were not at all likely to buy plants labeled as invasive and would not seek out species if listed as invasive. The issue remains that the public is unaware of what species to avoid, making education, labeling and availability of alternative non-invasive species imperative. Distinguishing between invasive and non-native species is also necessary, as invasive species make up only a small portion of the non-native organisms available to consumers. And by giving alternatives to releasing unwanted organisms, it will also help prevent the introduction of invasive species here in Ontario. Examples of established aquatic invasive species include goldfish, koi, rosy red minnow, Chinese mystery snail, red-eared slider, kabamba or fanwort, yellow floating heart, European frog bit, water soldier, yellow iris, flowering rush, and European water chestnut. Many other exotic species are not yet established in Ontario, but do possess the ability to become invasive if released, determined by their temperature tolerances, invasion histories, and preferred habitat. These species should be looked out for. Weather loach, white cloud mountain minnow, mosquito fish, pingy log sucker, high finned banded shark, rainbow shiner, rainbow dace or red shiner, the bitterling family, channeled apple snail, banded mystery snail, Parrot Feather, Brazilian Water Weed, Water Hyacinth, Hydrilla, Water Moss, Water Lettuce, and Mosquito Fern. The best method of control of invasive species is prevention. Educate yourself on different native and non-native species. Share your knowledge with consumers and guide consumers to keep and care for their pets and to never release any unwanted pets. Let them know that they can donate unwanted aquarium pets to local schools or list them for free online. Let consumers know if they can return unwanted fish, turtles or plants to your location. Encourage composting or disposing of unwanted plants into a local green bin program. Encourage tropical fish for backyard ponds as they can't survive the winter unless they're brought indoors. And beware of stocking natural ponds with invasive fish such as goldfish and koi as they can escape during flood events. Never release non-native species into the wild. Don't dump, don't flush. 
It's bad for your pets and bad for the environment. For more information on invasive species in Ontario and options for unwanted organisms, contact the Invading Species Hotline or online at invadingspecies.com.